<sighs> All right. Um, I just got to read this. This is cute. This is a country man out in West Virginia. Your reading is better than ice cream. I always want more. <laughs> I'm putting another garden bed. Two foot by 16 foot for a fall garden. I would like to grow cabbage, but we'll settle for some big old turnips. It was a hot one here today in West Virginia. Thanks, brother. God bless. That's sweet, isn't it? All right. So just just uh, as a freebie here, some extra ice cream. I'm going to go ahead and read another section. It then I'll be done. Don't spec no more after this one. Arrivals Part 3. The family cleared away the dishes and the girls began to clean the kitchen. Luke said, I've got some notes that I simply must go over while it's still fresh in my mind, and excused himself. Lisa helped with the dishes. John went into the living room and turned on the radio to try to find some news. In Los Angeles today, rioting broke out in the South Side Barrios in response to the Immigration Service sweeps rounding up undocumented aliens. President Bush made a statement about the effort. Anne came into the room and sat down next to her husband. John, I've got some news of my own tonight. There was something about the way she said that which made him uneasy, but he kept his voice light when he asked, Oh, what's up? I got an email from Carla yesterday. She's at the base in San Diego. He was sure that something was serious was going on now. Anne usually spoke with much more, much more lightly when communicating family news. Well, I'm glad we've heard from her again. Been a long time since that first letter. How is she? And the kids and Aaron, too. She stared at the fire in the stove for a moment, then said, It was partially about Aaron that she wrote me. She found my work address through the university website. She never received the letter you wrote her about your dad dying, and there's at least one letter that followed the first one she sent that never made it here. She's been hopping all over the country these last few months as the military moves its assets around. She said they were really trying to disperse as much of their critical functions as they could, which meant dislocating a lot of people. John considered this. I'll bet they're worried about some kind of some sort of mass destruction attack and want to be able to cut their losses if a base is hit. She wouldn't be able to say that outright because it's a near certainty that all electronics communication are monitored now. Maybe why those letters disappeared too, for all we know. One of the things she tried to tell us is in the missing letters that is that Aaron has never been found. She said the scene at the wharves was chaotic at the time of the evacuation and no one has any idea what may have become of him, but he wasn't on any of the ships that made it out of Norfolk, nor does he seem to have made it onto one of the planes that evacuated. As near as anyone can tell, he was still in Norfolk when the tsunami hit. Officially, he's still listed as missing, but she thinks he's dead. He let out a long sigh, a somber expression cast over his features. Well, I suppose it was too much to hope to think we'd be entirely untouched by the disaster. We should count ourselves lucky that Carla and the kids survived. She hesitated a moment, then continued. Surviving is the problem now, John. She says the Navy is really stripping itself in order to carry out its mission and is jettisoning, jettisoning everything that might slow it down. She's facing a mandatory hardship discharge because there isn't anyone to be responsible for Cindy and Neil since Aaron was lost. She wants to know if she can come here until she can get her feet under her. I told her that I'd have to talk to you. She's got to have an answer by Monday. John closed his eyes and leaned back into his chair, hands rubbing his temples. Jeez, when it comes, it comes in waves, doesn't it? I figured that if we make a maximum effort to utilize all of our resources, we'll get through the winter and far enough into spring to start getting some real food coming in without anyone here having to go on short rations and without having to ask for charity. There's just no way we'll be able to do that if we add three more mouths to feed to that equation. She's your sister, John. They're family. Anne looked somewhat bewildered at his response. Damn it, I know that, he said harshly. I know that. I didn't say they couldn't come here. I was just pointing out the hardship it was going to impose on everyone in and trying to resign myself to the inevitable. We're going to have to accept relief charity if everyone is going to eat. We've always put away more than we actually needed for just you, Mel, and myself and the livestock contribute even more, but every bit of that surplus was taken in when we took up the hatchers in Brittany. We're tapped out. Like it or not, I reckon I'll have to go down hat in hand and take that relief after all. 
I'll get over it eventually, I suppose. Hun, I know it's hard, but we're entitled to it, she said as soothingly as she could. We won't be asking for anything that everyone isn't entitled to. The government has always stepped in during times of disaster, and we've done it for other countries for longer than you or I have been alive. It's only fair that they should do the same for us in our time of need. He let out a long, long sigh. Yeah, you're right. Doesn't make it any easier to swallow just the same. Going to be crowded here for a spell if they show up here before the hatchers are able to move out, but we'll get by. It'll take more than that to knock us out of the race. Neither said anything for a time, but just watched the fire burn through the glass doors of the stove. Finally, Ann spoke up and said, there may be a partial answer to the problem, if you're willing to offer it to Carla. She didn't ask, but she might be willing to consider it. We could let her just send the kids so that she could stay in the service. That way she'd still be employed in a good job and making a decent wage, and we'd have one less person here to feed. Fostering your niece, niece and nephew, I, I guess you'd call it. He said nothing for a time, then replied, It's an idea. She doesn't have to have an answer until Monday when you go back to work. Let's chew it over until then and make up our mind Sunday night. Taking in her kids would give us one less mouth to feed, but it would mean I'd have five kids to cope with during the week when the rest of you are at work. When the hatchers move out, we'll be down to just four, but Heather's the oldest and the one who'd be the most help riding herd on the rest. But if Carla was able to stay in, she'd be able to help us out monetarily and possibly benefits-wise. I don't know. Of course, she could get killed, too. Let us not fool ourselves about the amount of fighting our military is going to find itself involved in before matters get back to normal, if they ever get back to normal at all. He fell silent, and they stared into the fire again. John gave a rueful grin and turned to his wife and said, Well, just when I thought we were finally seeing a clear path to the end, we discovered there's a valley full of problems still ahead. Let's think about it.